Now that we've seen stereotypes, let's take a look at how the education system perpetuates these and start with your own context. Look at your own environment. Take a look at the map of the institution you're in and see how even geographically it's designed in a way where these disciplines are separated and it's quite a bit of a walk to go from one side of the art campus to the other side of the science campus. So how did this emerge? Let's take a look. First, we want to be aware of the founding and the evolution of the idea of universities in order to have a sense of what kind of philosophy is driving the knowledge structure and delivery. For instance, let's take a look at a couple of blue chip schools in the U.S., Harvard, formed by Calvinists in 1636, Princeton, 1746, formed by Presbyterian Calvinists, Columbia University, 1754, formed by Church of England, and so on. Universities, as we know them now, grew out of churches in the West naturally, because scientific knowledge at that time, 1700s, was starting to clash with religious ideas of the world. And so we had to have these extensions, these edifices, that actually, if you look closely, resemble church architectures. Now if you look at the new buildings that are emerging on campuses, you will see that the contemporary buildings have more of an idea of a corporate structure. And you can see where the influence and money comes from these days. It would not be the churches. If you take a look at some of the modern buildings, contemporary buildings built on different campuses, you will see that they are hard to distinguish from an office or a business building. Um, and a lot of times the architectural marks are very much in relation to the cultural um, structures. Then if you look at what buildings are named after recently, not so much famous people. You do not see big names, academics, big thinkers. Now what you see is people who are wealthy from various types of businesses, many times real estate, and are rich enough to buy a name of the building. So for better or for worse, what we see is a shift in our educational structure through our architecture. For better or for worse, it's shifted to a more corporate structure. This is not in any way judgmental. It is just to raise your awareness that our structures in education are reflecting our structures in business and not churches. When you have an idea, if you work in science or art, in any discipline for that matter, that's a new idea, it comes from the same source that is mysterious, really. But what differentiates it from that point on is the methodologies that's applied. So as an, as an artist, if I have an idea about a work of art, I will set out with a completely different set of methodologies than a very similar idea that lands in a scientist's head and goes into a science lab with another series of methodologies. So the idea of methodologies should be something that you should be aware of, which one you apply, where you follow rules and directions, and where you actually go with the existing methodologies. This brings us also to the idea and discussion of paradigms. What is a paradigm and what is a paradigm shift that you so often hear about and I may say is 
often myself. Let's look at the ideas of methodologies and paradigms for just a little bit. The word paradigm uh, really comes from the word of science, actually. Uh, the historian of science, Thomas Kuhn, gave paradigm its contemporary meaning um, when he was talking about a, the, a specific set of practices that define scientific disciplines at a particular period of time. In other words, what's true now is going to be false in 100 years, and what was true 500 years is false now. That's when he was talking about paradigm defining it in relation to scientific innovation. His book, famous book, The Structure of Scientific Revolution, is where he defines scientific paradigm as universally recognized scientific achievements that, for a time, provide model problems and solutions for a community of researchers. What is to be observed? The kind of questions you're supposed to ask, how the questions are to be structures, and how the results of these investigations should be interpreted. So that is the idea of paradigm. How that this entered into cultural thinking as paradigm shift is not really known and it's just another example of how science informs popular culture. So Kuhn was talking about paradigm shifts in relation to the idea of a scientific revolution. When scientists discover anomalies which cannot be explained by the accepted paradigm, the set of methodologies that worked up to that point. The paradigm is not simply a current theory, but an entire world view. And that is the difference. It shifts the way we understand what we see around ourselves. So something that we saw as a duck turns into a rabbit. And this, this optical illusion is what Kuhn used to demonstrate the way in which the paradigm shift can completely change what we see and how we see it. 